Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez. Welcome to our channel. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about Fugata Itch, the transition from the low block to the high block at the other end. The reason I'm actually going there is I already talked about the block and punch. If you really think about it, block punch, you can see what, how it's used. That's, it. That's enough. We can, we can move on to the next thing. Now, with this block, you actually see yourself going low and then coming up high. The idea behind this, again, is if you look, think of momentum, or if you just look at force, if you think of the force that's produced by your arms versus the force cut produced by your legs, by going low and then coming up with the uh, uppercut, I'll use uh, the block as that instead for now, and uh, you end up actually being able to develop more force in your block rather than just using your block. So what you're doing is you're using momentum to drive force. Now, before I actually talk about that, I did also want to let you guys know that I am going to be doing a book signing along with uh, a plethora of other authors. Uh, it actually should be a lot of fun if you're in the Alpine area of San Diego. We're going to be at the Alpine Library on March 17th at 2 o'clock. Uh, like I said before, I'm actually bringing mostly my Off the Rails books, but if you do have any of my other books and are around, bring them in. I'll sign. I actually enjoy meeting people who have uh, come to uh, book signings. And it, it is a nice way to, for me to meet people. I know that there are a couple martial arts schools in the Alpine area. So hopefully, if you guys are watching this one, you'll we'll get a chance to meet. Uh, the other thing I really wanted to talk about is, as all of you know, I, I am a professor. And there's things that bother me about teaching. And it's not what most people think. It usually, usually, I love dealing with the students. The students at, the colleges I've actually taught were have been great students. I'm sure that, you know, there's a couple of exceptions, which or not, but there are people who are trying to better themselves. And one of the things that really bothers me about working it is <coughs> how certain things work. For instance, um, one of the things that happens is textbooks. Now, a lot of us use textbooks for various reasons, <coughs> but the problem that I find is it's actually in the cost of the textbook. What I mean by that is this. You have a textbook which, here in the U.S., will cost you $200. If you would buy the same textbooks on the international market, it's maybe $30. And the reason is most countries decided that they, you know, we shouldn't really be ripping off our students. And so that's one of the problems that happens with our system of, well, uh, you know, let's just take as much money as we possibly can. But then at the same time, I also do blame uh, professors for relying on textbooks. Now, as a science instructor, I know that I can actually send my kids to a PubMed, which is a uh, article database from the federal, the U.S. federal government, and as they are students, they have access to every article. I could potentially set up my class, and I have done this, I have done this in the past, and let them find the articles they need to make the class make sense. Now, sometimes this isn't appropriate. For instance, a lot of times these cutting edge research articles that we do find there may be too advanced for the class. But we do have a lot of other aspects that can actually help on the on internet. For instance, a lot of medical schools will have their uh, outlines for anatomy. And so what's the point of getting a anatomy textbook when you can get all the information you need in anatomy free? The other thing that bothers me about textbooks is, as I mentioned, anatomy. Uh, it, anatomy hasn't changed. You know, humans haven't changed since we started dissecting. And yet we have new editions of books coming out with, I don't, you know, I don't even know what they try to put in there. I mean, they move one picture to another, and now it's a new edition. And student, any professor who uses that book, now has to have a, an issue with, well, as they move this one, we now can only get this, that book in the bookstore. And so now my students, instead of being able to buy a used copy of a textbook, they're using the new and improved edition, which took one picture, moved it over here, got rid of one picture and put a new one in. And it didn't add anything, any value in what was in the textbook. Uh, so that's actually one of the things that I've actually always seen is, I understand that these things are a lot of work, but there are a lot of classes that really don't lend them. Textbooks are really obsolete. Uh, for instance, the, uh, pretty, the agriculture department of the, uh, of the U.S. 
has a list of everything, has everything you need to learn nutrition in a lower division level. And if you know the nutrition in lower division, it's real easy to go and read the articles for things you would need for upper division. Now, there are things that I do think actually do help people. If someone can make a book which is organized a specific way, which is new, let's say, or can help people learn something by adding something to it, there's no problem in a new book being formed. But is a book really have, does a book really have information that's worth $200 when the information is all available online? Uh, now, that's my little thing, my little rant that I went on. I hope you enjoy this. I, again, I am actually going to be talking about that upward block you see, if we got that itch from where you see it. And then we're going to talk about next week. Uh, I may, next week I may actually do something a little different before I go to the uh, reverse with the, uh, going back to the uh, uh, Imbusan from uh, the last point where you actually go to the reverse punch. I hope you enjoy this and have a nice day. I'm actually going to look at the, uh idea of the, for lack of a better term, walk of Fugatani. Now, if he comes in, I can't bring you to bring the arm down. If I use this other arm, I can bring this arm down, and then I can slide in, it comes straight up. Now, if you use this as a, as a punch, you go straight up, and what you have is you have an uppercut. If, on the other hand, if you punch it here, and then I come up here, again, I can actually come and walk here, or if he does a hook. So can you see the do the hook? By coming here, I actually have to block with the elbow here. So if you can look on this angle here, do come in. You can see it. Do it so. So here, you have the elbow coming in here to cause a block. Now the next part of the move is the reverse punch here, which here you can see it straight here. If you look at the hips, you can see that from the block, you're already cranked up to be able to use the hips and legs for the next punch. And then the last two moves of the kata are relatively the same as the other one we found. So thank you and hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. That works.